maybe it doesn't even matter if you get diabetes, man. Oh, it might be worth it, it looks pretty good to be honest. Is high carb fueling killing you slowly? We've seen it recently, the high carb fueling revolution that's changing cycling, upping power outputs, giving guys thresholds of a billion watts per kg. Jump into any comment section and you'll see people say, oh yeah, but it's bad for their health long term, they're going to get diabetes. As soon as they stop cycling, they're going to get obese and have all these diseases. So today we're going to run through why you're an average sedentary person. Every second you sit there is an hour off your life. Look at all of you. And an athlete, and yes that's you, not just the elite level, don't follow the same rules. I'm going to talk you through the basics of why high carb fueling isn't bad for your health, why it's going to help you progress long term, and the reasons behind this. If you're new here, I'm Boris Clark, I've got a master's degree in bioenergetics, I'm an elite level rider and I'm an international cycling coach. So I've spent my life dealing with these things, going through these things, nerding out on these things. Let's jump in to these reasons behind why high carb fueling is not killing. So open any, any gel packet, bar, thing like that, or even just fueling with lollies like I tend to do. And obviously there's a lot of sugar in this. And people say, well sugar's bad for you, it's gonna cause disease. Which is better, one or two? One or two? One or two? Two! No, the answer is one! And now, that can be true, but the reality is, even for a sedentary person, it's insulin that is the issue, not the sugar per se. So if we start off, what happens when we eat sugar? We absorb it through our gut, it goes into the blood. This causes a blood glucose rise. I think we're all familiar with that, high blood sugar, things like that. So our body has to deal with that somehow. So if you're not exercising, your body has to release insulin from the pancreas in order to shuttle this glucose or this blood, this sugar, extra blood sugar uh, into either the muscle, into adipose tissue, it'll store it as glycogen, or store it as fat, but it lowers your blood sugar and that gets you back to, to a good level and you're all good. But if you're constantly eating sugar, constantly getting these insulin spikes, that's not good for you. It's not the sugar per se, it's these high insulin levels which your body will basically stop reacting to and eventually you need more and more insulin and things like this and this is not good. But when we exercise, it's a completely different picture. And of course, another big thing to note is that most of you watching this aren't subscribed and you don't like the video. If you please do both of those, it would help me a lot. So when you exercise, your insulin levels go almost to zero. And what we get is called GLUT4, or glucose transporter 4, which goes from the muscle cell to the outside of the muscle cell and basically allows glucose to come in without that insulin spike. So while you're exercising hard, you eat all the sugar, but then it goes into the muscle, no questions asked, just straight in, use this fuel. And so you don't really get any insulin release. So that is the main reason why when you're active, even if you're not extremely active, like a Tour de France winner or something like that, if you're just your average cyclist and you're eating carbs on your ride, that's why it's not bad for you. There's no real big insulin spike, you'll be just fine. But what about off the bike? If we continue to eat sugar and lollies and cake, <laughs> Can you have your cake and eat it too off the bike without health issues? Woohoo! Look at that blubber fly! Yes. Well, let's jump into that next. Now, the beauty of being reasonably aerobically fit isn't just you can ride up hills hard. So, off the bike, you've got all these other adaptations. You've got more capillaries, more mitochondria, better mitochondria, more GLUT4 and much more insulin sensitive muscle. So what does this actually mean? Well insulin sensitivity is simply how much insulin you basically need in order to be able to store glucose, get it into the muscle, store it as fat, whatever you're going to do with it. Now as an athlete, someone who just exercises, you'll be much more insulin, insulin sensitive than someone who just sits on a couch all day, sits at a desk all day. So what happens when someone who's sedentary, they eat sugar, just day to day life, they get this big insulin spike, it's a problem. As someone who trains, and the more you train, the, the more this will impact you, you become extremely insulin sensitive, meaning you only need a small insulin release to store a lot of carbohydrate or glucose. So what this means is in your day to day life, you have some sugar, you have some lollies, you have some pastries, some cakes, whatever. I'm not saying it's good for you, but it's going to cause much less harm to you than someone who doesn't exercise at all. And this is why, while exercise is not everything, diet's important, exercise is actually medicine. It's so important because it changes the way your body metabolizes everything. So I mentioned diabetes before, and to recap, this is to do with too much insulin too often. So I mentioned insulin before, and why you don't have to worry about this, despite the fact you might be having lots of sugar, lots of carbs on the bike, and these things are normally associated with diabetes. 
Now diabetes, or at least type 2 diabetes, the one related to lifestyle factors, is essentially when your body has to release more and more insulin to get the same effect of lowering blood glucose. So you basically become less sensitive to it over time, as I sort of mentioned before. But exercise has another protective mechanism against this, which really helps avoid things like diabetes, and that's because one of the large factors which relates to diabetes is a lack of fat turnover. So this means adipose tissue, or fat tissue, that is not being burned. So this doesn't mean being fat is causing diabetes, it doesn't mean skinny is avoiding it. It means if you have fat tissue and you burn it, you use it for fuel, even if your diet's terrible and you replace it, this is less likely to contribute to diabetes than if you're quite skinny, but you don't do any activity, you're never burning any fat. So this fat tissue that's just hanging around for long periods is quite strongly related to developing diabetes. So if you're exercising all the time, even if you're having quite a few carbs during that exercise, which will cause you to burn more carbohydrate, you're still going to be burning a fair ton of fat, and so you're going to have this fat turnover. Even if you're not losing weight, even if you're gaining weight, you're turning the fat over, it's not just sitting there stagnant on your body for a long time. Now that we've cleared all of that up, let's talk about high carb fueling, why you want to do it, how it's going to benefit your riding, and ultimately, how it can actually benefit your health. Now you won't always want to go for the maximum amount of carbs you can on the bike. And that's a, that's a video for another day about how much, how often, and when. And this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. They want to lose weight, they want to get fit, get lean, things like that. So they reduce not only their carbs, but just their total calories. They get fatigued, they can't train as much. They don't adapt, their power output doesn't go up as much, things like this. And this is where the fueling really comes into it. If you feel well, you adapt well, you've got good power on the bike, you put more power out on the bike, because you put more power out on the bike, you burn more energy. You can ride longer at higher power, spending more time burning energy at a higher energy burn rate. And all these things contribute to greater insulin sensitivity, greater fat turnover, get better cardiovascular fitness, and all these things that are not only related to performance, but related to health. So remember to fuel, dealing with high carbs is not the enemy. So I hope that's helpful, I hope it's useful, I hope it's understandable. I'll see you in the next one.